Hello, I'm Tristan from Smart Home Point. Ring have come a really long way since their appearance on Shark Tank as Doorbot back in 2013. They started out with a single smart doorbell, but now they have 10 smart doorbells and over 10 smart cameras when you include all the different variants. All this choice is great, but it can also be confusing, as my previous rant explained. So today's video will cover all the different Ring doorbell models, so it's clearer which one you should buy. I'll also cover the different Ring camera models in a future video. Right then, let's get started. I'm going to explain the different Ring doorbell models in the form of a song. Ring, your doorbell from Ring. Just kidding. Don't worry, I, I, I won't sing anymore. So, the 10 most recent Ring doorbell models are shown on the screen now. But it's worth pointing out that the original Ring Video Doorbell 1, which films in a lower resolution, 720p, is no longer sold. The Ring Doorbell 2 is also not actively for sale. Both will work if you already own one or you find it on a shelf somewhere, but you won't be able to buy them directly from Ring.com or Amazon any anymore, so I'll skip them in this video. Right, so the first key difference is whether the Ring Doorbell is battery powered or wired in. The wired Pro and Pro 2 are all wired into your house's mains electricity, and then they connect to your router over Wi-Fi. The Ring Doorbell Elite is also wired in, but to Ethernet, not your mains power. That's right, the very expensive Elite model runs on power over Ethernet, meaning the CAT cable, also called network cable, is run to the doorbell itself, and, this th and that then provides both power and internet connectivity. In general, there are four wired-in models, and they're all a little bit harder to install than the battery alternatives. But the constant power supply given to them means that they often outperform the battery models since they don't need to worry about power conservation, and as a result, they don't need to reduce functionality in order to save battery life. In other words, the all-important motion detection tends to work better on these wired-in models. And that brings us nicely onto the other ring doorbells, the battery ones. These have a battery, surprisingly, eh? and they then connect to your router over Wi-Fi, same as the other ones. They can also be hardwired in, but this is mainly to provide a low tri uh, voltage trickle charge, as it's called, to keep the battery charged up. You don't have to hardwire these in, of course, but then it just means that you have to take them down and charge them up when the Ring app notifies you that the battery is running low. And of course, during this recharging time, which can take as much as 10 hours on some models, your property won't benefit from a smart doorbell, which is a clear downside. But the upside is that the, these battery models are much easier to install. Just mount them and then connect them over Wi-Fi. There are no wires to run and no transformers are required. So that's quite nice. And that's the main first main difference I wanted to cover, whether your ring doorbells are battery powered or wired. But now I wanted to cover the specific feature differences between each of them. Sticking with the four wired models for a second, we have the Wired, the Pro, the Pro 2, and the Elite. All four of these have the same general features, such as recordings that are activated based on motion. Uh, they all also give you alerts when someone is at your door. They also have snapshot captures, live view modes, changeable recording lengths, people-only notifications to cut down on false positives, two-way intercom style facilities, motion snoop schedules, and a whole lot more. Basically, all the normal features that you will have seen your friends and family use, and also on the TV ads, they all have them. But in terms of the differences, the Pro and the Elite both offer a bit more than the Wired, and then the Pro 2 offers more than the rest. I cover all the differences between the Pro and the Wired in another video, but the two main differences are firstly that the Pro is dual band, offering both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi support. And also the Pro can be hooked up to your existing mechanical chime on your wall to ring your old doorbell too. The wired is stuck at 2.4 GHz support and it only officially supports the plug-in ring chime. The Pro, the Pro 2 and the Elite also offer the new quick reply and greeting features, which are designed to really usefully tell visitors and delivery couriers what to do when you're out or busy. So clearly the wired does have some missing features, but is there any benefit of the Pro 2 over the Pro? Well, Yes, I also cover this in another video, but the Pro 2 has a built-in radar. It has head-to-toe resolution, so that you see more of a person when they approach your doorbell. And it also has improved speaker and microphone systems. 
so you can finally speak to your visitors without the wind hitting the uh, speaker and causing loads of distortion. The benefit of those final two points are fairly obvious, but what about the radar? Well, this allows the Pro 2 to build up a bird's eye view map of exactly where your visitors walked before they pressed your doorbell. I mean, I personally wouldn't use this feature, but if you have a really large front yard, it might help. Uh, it might help you to see whether somebody is scoping out your property, maybe. And that's basically it for the four wired doorbells. The Pro 2 is the best on paper, although whether it's actually worth $80 more than the Pro 1 is debatable. The Wired is also available at an awesome price, $60, considering there has all the basic ring features, whereas the Elite is the only option open to you if you want a smart power over ethernet doorbell. Now, onto the battery models. There's quite a few of these, but the original 720p doorbell and the Doorbell 2 aren't sold anymore, so I'm just gonna disregard these for now especially since the Doorbell 2 isn't much different from the Doorbell 1 2020 edition. That means that there's actually four battery models that I'm going to discuss. The Doorbell 1 2020 edition, the Doorbell 3, the Doorbell 3 Plus, and the recently released Ring Video Doorbell 4. This is where it gets a bit confusing. Thanks, Ring. Let's start with the easy case, the Doorbell 1 2020 edition. This is a bit like the wired model. It has a lot of the basic Ring features, I'd argue 90% of the important stuff, but nothing more. It doesn't offer quick replies. It's stuck at 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. It doesn't have a quick release battery pack. You can't change the faceplate and it doesn't offer pre-roll. But that's not to say it's bad. It costs less than $100 and it's still a really convenient product that records at full HD or Ring's version of full HD anyway. And I say that because Ring actually compresses the video down via a low bit rate. So it's not really true HD. But before I move on, I need to mention pre-roll and cover this in more detail because it's an important topic for the next three doorbells. Ring's battery doorbells have traditionally started recording right before someone clicks your doorbell, which isn't always useful, especially if you suspect that crime has been committed. As a result, the wired doorbells and now some of the newer battery ones have pre-roll, which records four to six seconds of extra footage, depending on the model. This is sometimes a black and white clip shown on top of the existing recording. Whilst with the wired doorbells, it's actually a full six seconds of HD footage that gets added to the beginning of the clip, which is really nice, making your recordings one minute and six seconds long, not just one minute. Right, with that explained, with all that said, let's move on to the Ring Doorbell 3. This doesn't have pre-roll footage, nor does it have quick replies, but it does offer dual band Wi-Fi, a quick release battery, interchangeable faceplates as well. Of course, it's almost double the price of the Doorbell 1 2020 edition, so I'd argue it's not really worth the price, but that's just my opinion. For $20 more, you can get the Doorbell 3 Plus, and this does offer pre-roll and quick replies. Whilst this pre-roll is a good feature for any battery doorbell, it's a bit like skim milk. You know it's not quite as good as the real thing. The reason I say this is that the pre-roll on the Doorbell 3 Plus is low resolution and it's only four seconds long. It's better than nothing, but it's still not great. That then brings us on to the Doorbell 4. It's a pretty good product. It costs the same as the Doorbell 3 Plus, $199, but it has full color pre-roll, albeit it's still limited to four seconds. The color pre-roll does seem a lot nicer on the Doorbell 4 though. There's something a bit odd about a smart device like the Doorbell 3 Plus that delivers black and white footage. It's just weird. The Doorbell 4 also has improved motion detection and night vision performance. Okay, apart from an upcoming rant about Ring, I think that's almost everything that I have to say about the different models. The Ring website is fairly good at showing comparison tables and FAQs that detail the exact differences between their models. I'd say that if you're in the market for a wired doorbell, the choice is fairly clear at each price point. The Wired, the Pro and the Pro 2, and obviously the Elite, all offer a sensible set of features for their respective price. However, on the battery side of things, it's a bit of a mess. I mean, the Doorbell 1 2020 edition makes sense. It's less than 100 bucks and it still offers a good deal of basic features that you'd expect. Plus it's a battery powered, meaning it's easy to install compared to the Wired versions. But then you have the Doorbell 3 at $179, the Doorbell 3 Plus at $199, and the Doorbell 4 
also at $199. But yet the doorbell 4 is better in pretty much every case to the other two. I actually don't see the point of the doorbell 3 plus anymore and the doorbell 3 doesn't justify its $20 price tag in my mind. My hunch is that Ring will kill the doorbell 3 range completely in the future, but right now it's just confusing for us customers. People might even think that the 3 plus is better than the 4, even though it's not. It's just not. My suggestion to you as a potential Ring doorbell customer is to either buy the doorbell 1 2020 edition at $99 or the doorbell 4 at $199. Just disregard everything else. And my suggestion to Ring is sort it out. Kill the doorbell 3 and just offer two battery choices, the 1 and the 4. Simple. Right, and that wraps up today's video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please click the thumbs up button, which will tell YouTube the more people should watch this video. Please also consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon, which will notify you when I release a new video. Thanks.